Hello friends, a very happy new year to all of you. I'll take this opportunity to welcome you all to a bright new year. Make new resolutions, reconsider your goals and live a happy life. So let's begin. Today we'll be talking about the Indus Plain. It is one of the geographical features, topographical features of Pakistan. We already uh, discussed that there are six topographical features of Pakistan. And today we'll be discussing the Indus Plain, which is one of them. The Indus Plain is divided into two parts. The northern part is called as the upper Indus Plain, whereas the southern part is called as the lower Indus Plain. There are various landforms that are formed uh, within the Indus Plain itself. Um, they are also called as the topographical features of the Indus Plain. Now, these include the active flood plains, the old flood plains, the alluvial terraces, Piedmont plains, tidal delta, and the rolling sand plains. Now, uh, I've already made a video on the Piedmont plains, so I'll be, uh, you know, giving a link to it in the description box below. Whereas, uh, tidal delta and rolling sand plains are not there in your course, so I'll not be discussing them. Whereas, active flood plains and old flood plains and alluvial terraces, we'll be discussing them as we move along. Okay, now let's move on. Now the first thing is uh, the map. Let's look at the map of Pakistan. This is the you know uh, brief uh, and a very simple outline map of Pakistan, and I have marked all the rivers as well. So beginning with this, you know, this blue lines uh, uh, are the rivers, and uh, this is the main river that is the river Indus. I hope it's clear to all of you. There are various other uh, channels that are joining the river. These all channels are called as the tributaries of River Indus. So first we got to memorize their names. This is the main river, River Indus. Uh, what is joining River Indus is Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi and Satlaj. Satlaj uh, is joined by another river which is called as Biaz. This Biaz river actually flows in India and Satlaj also flows in India and a part of Satlaj is also in India. So the part of Satlaj that's flowing in India is joined by Biaz. Okay, so there are five main tributaries of river Indus. Let's count Jhelum 1, Chenab 2, Ravi 3, Satlaj 4, Biaz 5. Is that clear? Now let's talk about the upper Indus plain and the lower Indus plain. This part is called as the upper Indus plain, you know, this whole part. And can, you, can you see this dotted line till here? This is the upper Indus plain and when Indus plain becomes just one, it flows down as a single river. That's the plain. That's the time when it's called as the lower Indus plain. Okay. Beginning from the top, uh, it's Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi and Satlaj. Remember these tributaries names and how do they join the river Indus? First, it's Jhelum. Jhelum is joined by Chenab. Then it's Ravi. Okay, Ravi. And then finally, um, Satlaj. Now, if you look clear carefully, uh, the river uh, Ravi and uh, the river Satlaj, yeah, they are joining the river Chenab and also the river Jhelum. Okay, so all of them are joining the river Chenab and then it's the Chenab river that's joining river Indus. So look carefully here. This is Jhelum. Here it's joining Chenab. See carefully. See this is Jhelum. The river Jhelum is coming down and it's joining this main river. This main river is river Chenab. So it's f first it's the Jhelum river that's joining Chenab. As Chenab moves down, it's joined by another river which is Ravi. As it moves further down, it's joined by Satlaj. Now, when it's joined, when it's joined by Satlaj, now it's almost five rivers that have joined the main river, which is Chenab. Okay, which five rivers? It's River Jhelum, then Ravi and uh, Satlaj, and also Biaz. That is four rivers and plus one five. So now, when the five rivers flow together, they are called as Panjnad. Okay, so at this area, when they join together, this area is called as Panjnad. And the river itself then is described as Panjnad. So the Panjnad flows for around 72 kilometers. Right? Then there comes a point which is called as Mithan Kot. At this point, the river, uh, that is the Panjnad river, joins the main river which is the river Indus. And it flows as one. And that's when it's called as the lower Indus plain. It enters the lower part of Pakistan and it's at that point where the river is now described as the lower Indus uh, river. Okay, the upper Indus river and the lower Indus river, right? So, I hope this is clear. Now, let's, uh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, there are certain things that have been highlighted here in uh, orange color. 
so the areas between two rivers keep that in mind as well because when we discuss it uh, uh, you know further it will become uh, easy for you to understand area between two rivers is called as a duab now there are specific names for all of these uh, areas between the rivers okay we'll be discussing that as we move along but uh, for now just remember that the area between two rivers now indus and jhelum are two rivers so area between them is a duab jhelum and chenab two rivers area between them is a duab it has a specific name that is chaj duab then again area between chenab and ravi is a duab area between ravi and satluj is a duab okay so the area between two rivers is called as a duab now let's move ahead and now looking at you know what are the uh, features formed uh, within the indus plain it is the active flood plain the old flood plain and the alluvial terraces so for now active flood plains what are active flood plains they are narrow strips of land on both the sides of the river supposing this is the river okay so the immediate uh, land which is uh, uh, situated on either sides of the river will be called as the active flood plain it is a narrow strip it is usually flooded with water obviously because it's very close to the river throughout the year it remains inundated or flooded with water now what are the features that are formed in this uh, plain it is the braided channels are formed here uh, the soil is rich in alluvium obviously and then there are meanders formed and oxbow lakes and what are meanders and oxbow lakes i have discussed that in my video already and i'll be mentioning the link to that video in the description box below so you can have a look at it now let's move on to the old flood plain old flood plain is a mixture of two things okay so you got to remember that it's the meander flood plain and the cover flood plain okay so uh, looking at the uh, picture here again supposing this is the river so immediate just uh, the you know adjacent to the river will be uh, the active flood plains on either sides now after the active flood plain will come the old flood plain okay now the old flood plain comprises of two parts that is the cover flood plain and the meander flood plain the part closer to the active flood plain will be the meander flood plain and the part away from the active flood plain will be the cover flood plain on either side if you make this diagram in front of you and study it this way it will never get out of your head now uh, you know it's uh, this part uh, the main distinctive features of the old flood plain is that it's covered with old alluvium okay now old alluvium why because it's old flood plain and that is the part which receives uh, uh, the water of the river only during monsoons okay when the river is full of water so the water uh, you know inundates not just the active flood plain but also moves uh, a little away from the active flood plain or uh, uh, you know goes further away so that's the point where it reaches the old flood plain as well so what are the features that are formed here uh, it's the abandoned channels because uh, not uh, uh, the whole uh, not uh, uh, every time uh, does the old flood plain receive water and meander scars so the meanders have also formed scars the water has already dried up and the remains of oxbow lakes some parts of oxbow lakes are also found in the old flood plain but they're not full of water not as uh, Uh, you know uh, uh, fully formed as in the active flood plain now moving ahead what are the alluvial terraces alluvial ter terraces is are high areas between rivers now you know what what is the area between river called the area between two rivers is called as a <coughs> excuse me is called as a duab so the alluvial terraces are formed between the duab and how are they formed they are formed by uh, the erosion of old alluvium and they are raised platforms so we will see them as you know a plateau like structure a raised structure a high area between two rivers now they are also called as scalloped interfluves so keep that in your mind now this is something technical or something that you should simply have to memorize so there are certain uh, you know uh, terraces that are found in pakistan what are they you have to learn their names you know they are known, known as bars alluvial terraces or bars okay so sandal bar ganji bar neeli bar and kirana bar where are they formed um, the sandal bar is located in the rachna duab duab you know what a duab is it's the area between two rivers okay so it's found in the rachna duab and ganji bar is located in the bari duab neeli bar is located again in the bari duab and kirana bar in the chaj duab now how do you memorize it uh, the easiest method is to form abbreviations like this see sr G B N B K C, but before you, you know K C N B G B S R, but before you you know form abbreviations like that, you have to be very thorough with the names of these doabs and also these bars. 
okay so you don't have to get confused bars are alluvial terraces that are the raised areas between the rivers and they are formed obviously between the rivers right so what is uh, the area between the river called it's called as a doab and each doab has a specific name as i earlier mentioned don't get confused because we'll be discussing that in detail as well so for now see what have been discussed we have discussed all the um, main features of the indus plain active flood plain old flood plain and the alluvial terraces now what are this you know this duab section L let's look at the cross section of a duab now this is river one river the blue color that you can see here this is river number two and the area between two rivers is called as a duab what is inside a duab we'll be discussing that today okay now this is the river the immediate raised area or a ridge like thing that's formed uh, you know just uh, beside the river it's called as a levee and this has also been discussed by me in another video i'll be mentioning the link to that video in the description box below okay so uh, yeah so after the levee comes the active flood plain we discussed that earlier okay so that is just the um, part adjacent to the river is called as the active flood plain you move ahead comes the old flood plain right and the old flood plain comprises of two parts the meander flood plain and the cover flood plain easy now after the old flood plain comes in the alluvial terrace that we just discussed or the bar upland you know the difficult names that we just discussed uh, the kirana bar neeli bar ganji bar sandal bar all of them okay so they are called as the alluvial terraces okay now you know the this uh, raised it is a what is an alluvial terrace it is a raised platform so the sides of this raised platform is called as scarp okay fine on the other side again the whole story will get repeated this is also a scarp this will be the cover flood plain this will be the meander flood plain and what is it it's part of the old flood plain coming closer to the river will be the active flood plain okay and this is this raised platform is a levee we have already discussed that and this is river number 2 so this is the entire cross section of the doab there is no rocket science in this and it's very easy okay now let's move on now these are also some things some names that you have to by heart and remember really well so i have made it this way and if you remember it this way or you know make it to yourself on a piece of paper uh, it will be very easy very very helpful especially during the time of exams so this is river indus and river jhelum area between them is called as a doab but what is the exact name of the doab it is the sind sind sagar doab clear jhelum and chenab okay again two rivers the area between it is called as a doab what is the name of that doab chaj doab okay so area between jhelum and chenab is called as a chaj doab and which bar is located on that doab it is the kirana bar clear now chenab and ravi two rivers right so between them the area is called as rachna doab and which bar is located there it's the sandal bar then ravi and satluj it is the bari doab and there are two uh, bars situated on it it is the neeli bar and the ganji bar see how simple it becomes if you make it you know this way okay now moving ahead um, the last thing that i need to discuss you know this also gets asked in the exams so it's important uh, the differences between the upper indus plain and the lower indus plain one thing that i forgot to mention what is the main activity of the river the main activity of the river is erosion and deposition okay the whole time as the river you know uh, goes through its entire journey it is doing these two things eroding as well as depositing now what it does during in the upper indus plain and the lower indus plain we'll look at it now the upper indus plain first difference it's in the northern part of pakistan lower indus plain is in the southern part now what uh, flows in the upper indus plain it is the river indus and its tributaries what are tributaries there are there are channels or rivers that join the river main river okay and whereas in the lower indus plain we see only the river indus flowing and then the river indus uh, you know forms its distributaries now what are distributaries they are channels which um come out of the river or eject out of the river okay when the river before the river falls into the ocean or the sea now coming on to the upper indus plain again it's the river of jhelum chenab ravi and satluj then uh, you know uh, satluj joins the river chenab at a point which is called as panchna then now there are five rivers together and these five rivers together you know they flow for a little while that is around 72 kilometers then they join river indus at a place which is called as mithun coat and then the river indus flows as one okay whereas in the lower place uh, lower indus plain what is the story 
it's just one river the river indus and that in river indus flow falls into the arabian sea end of the story and before it falls into the arabian sea it has to divide into number of branches which are called as distributaries upper indus plain is nearly flat it is undulating you know uh, wavy and then uh, it uh, 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 it it slopes towards the southwest whereas uh, you know the lower indus plain it is also flat and undulating and it slopes towards the south and the average width of the upper indus plain is around 1.4 kilometers till kalabagh the area it is an area okay till kalabagh it is 1.4 kilometers but when it reaches sakhar it uh, widens and it becomes around 1.6 kilometers so this uh, actually tells us that in the upper course you know uh, the river is not very wide but when it comes down it becomes really wide you know what is the reason behind it now the river is carrying a lot of load it has eroded it has traversed a lot of distance so in all that uh, in through all that distance it uh, you know eroded and um, gathered a lot of silt uh, uh, rock and alluvium and all that with it so what happens it starts to widen okay so if you look at lower indus plain the width increases and becomes around 1.6 kilometers in the upper indus plain erosion and deposition both are taking place both the activities whereas in the lower indus plain the river has already you know cap um, emerged a lot of things and now it's only involved in depositing them wherever it's going uh, upper indus plain meanders are found oxbow plains are oxbow lakes are formed uh, braided channels and levees can also be seen can also be seen whereas in the lower plain uh, lower indus plain all these things are also found in the lower indus plain in the upper indus plain you will see piedmont plains and uh, piedmont plains are with alluvial fans and where do they fan they fan to the north and west okay so this has been discussed so you can look at uh, the video for the explanation on piedmont plains the lower indus plain again the piedmont plains are present with alluvial fans to the west agriculture this area is excellent for agriculture upper indus plain i mean and uh, it is excellent for agriculture and for irrigation what sort of irrigation can be utilized link canal irrigation why because there are various rivers many tributaries of the river indus so you can link those um, you know rivers through link canal and then uh carry on with the irrigation of the land area and uh continue with uh, agriculture whereas in the lower indus plains uh, yes it's very fertile the land is fertile and agriculture can be practiced but not uh, with link in all irrigation you have to use other methods of irrigating the area okay so that's clear uh i hope this video was helpful and i tried to keep it as brief as possible although it was a very lengthy topic and a difficult topic as well for most of the students but after this video i don't think it should remain a difficult topic for all of you so till uh, my next video i'm signing off um take care of yourself bye bye